I'm Steve Benwart. I'm the director of the Croto Research Institute. It's part of the engineering faculty. I'm a professor of environmental engineering science, and I'm also the university's cost-cutting director for research and innovation in the area of energy and the environment. This is a great example of how soil is formed within Earth's critical zone. You take a look at a bank like this and you see exactly how our planet has used the forces of geology to create an environment where humans can thrive. We see a cliff like this and we think this has been here for hundreds, thousands of years. But if we think of this in terms of the great geological forces of the planet, the uplift from plate tectonics, the weathering that occurs as water filters over millions of years through rock, in fact, this layer of, of soil at the top of the, of the earth here, it's very ephemeral. It's something that we think it appears and disappears easily. It's fragile and it's threatened. It's something that due to the human population pressures on our planet, we can lose very easily. The work that I do in research is about soil. It's how soil also affects the rest of the environment. Of course, it's very important in terms of the obvious things like food production, but it also has an important role, for example, in producing clean water. If you take a look at this embankment behind me, from the tops of the trees at the very top of this hill, down here to the surface of the water, you see a slice of earth that we call the critical zone. This is this treetop to bedrock, just this thin veneer of the planet where humans live. It supports us, it provides all of our food, it provides our clean water, does everything that we do takes place here. And at the very heart of it is soil. That's what interests me. Now you might ask me, what is the function of soil? What does it do for the planet? What does it do for people? Well, there's a lot of different answers to that question. If I talk to a civil engineer, they'll tell me it's a platform to put a building on. If I go to my colleagues in the arts and humanities, they'll say, well, it's a place that preserves archeological information about what people were doing here thousands of years ago. But to me in the natural sciences, when I look at soil, I see a natural chemical reactor. It transports geological materials and it transforms into magical things, clean water, nutrients that turn into crops, turn into wood, all these useful things that we get out of nature. And it all happens right there in that very thin layer. To understand something like the critical zone or to understand the function of soil, it takes expertise from quite a few different disciplines. If you want to talk about protecting soil, creating clean water, the interface between soil, the water cycle, the interface between soil and greenhouse gases like the CO2 in the atmosphere, that problem is enormous. It's a planetary scale and it spans across many disciplines. I can't tackle that alone as an environmental engineer. My colleagues who study the trees at the top of this hill, they are not going to solve the problem of soil and how to protect it just by looking at that tree. If I go to my colleagues in engineering that tell me how groundwater is moving through this rock and feeding the water in this stream, they're not going to be able to solve the problem by working alone. So we have to put it all together. We need our colleagues in the social scientists that tell us how to value soil, why it's important for our community. We we need our engineers to tell us what the role of soil is in the water cycle. It needs people like me that explain how soil works. We need all these points of view and you have to combine it, put it all together in order to solve this major environmental problem.